Yo, what's going on guys, friend host of Kynorx Crash, and today, actually earlier this week, we had some breaking news regarding the world-renowned Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games series. Mario and Sonic at the London 2012 Olympic Games! It's dead. Oh. Here lies Squidward's hopes and dreams. What a baby. Now, as you probably already know, the Paris 2024, for, uh, 2024 Olympic Games are already underway. The games have been going on for about a week now. Actually, over, like, not over a week, but this week they've been going on. They're going to be ending this following weekend. And then the, oh, pa the past weekend, we also had the April opening ceremony. And by that point, people were questioning, are, are we going to have a Paris 2024 24 Olympic Games? Because... I don't know, it seems like the games were starting to fade out after the Tokyo 2020 game because, as you might have noticed, we were missing a 2018 release for the Winter Olympic Games, but that's because Ubisoft had the rights to make the Winter Games back during the Sochi 2014 Olympic Games, and they dropped the bomb on that one. And then with Tokyo 2020, after that one, we didn't see another Winter Games one, so now we, everyone must be thinking, well, Sega had the rights originally to make the Olympic Games, the Summer Olympic Games, right? So, there has to be one coming off of Paris, right? Well, no, it turns out that Sega lost the license during the, um, unforeseen, uh, pandemic that we do not mention. Um, I'm all over the place, because I had a bunch of coffee, so I'm really energetic and hyper, so let's just jump straight into this. So, we have this tweet from Lee Cocker. We, we have Lee Cocker here, who is one of the devs on, actually, he's not one of the devs, he's one of the ones who helped to make the partnership possible between Sega and Nintendo. He's not one of the devs, but he is part of the, the um, the franchising people over the International Olympic Committee. And essentially, he says in this post, for the people that are asking that there will be no more Mario & Sonic games for Paris 2024, the franchise finished with Mario & Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020. I know, because I worked on all the games in the franchise. And that, that, that's pretty much the, that's pretty much the, drop, the ball drop, and Eurogamer makes an entire post about this, about what exactly happened, and you can see by the headlines, it wasn't cancelled for good reasons. <laughs> and just to show more proof right here, here's Lee Cocker um, shaking hands with the president back in 2009 of the International Olympics Committee. Um, and it says right here that he was presenting a demonstration at Mario Sonic at the Winter Olympic Games of Vancouver 2010. Which, by the way, is one of the better ones. Definitely, if you have not played the Olympic Games yet, now's a better time than ever to go play them. Yeah, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games is dead now. And, I mean, it was a good run while it lasted. Like, the game had, like... The games, yes, as they continued to be pumped out, they weren't—they got less interesting. It was more of the same thing, more or less. It was just a, it's the same minigame collection. But the dream events are really what carried these games, especially since they brought so much personality to the games. But we're going to get into that in a second. But we got more news to go over as to why the, the Olympic Games series for Mario and Sonic was canceled. And there's two main reasons as to why they were canceled. We're going to get into that right now. The first reason is because Sega obviously lost the license to make the Olympic video games. And that license got shipped over back to the International Olympics Committee, and they decided to go with a more different approach. In fact, there was no Beijing 2022 Mario & Sonic Olympic Games then either, because by then, the license was shipped to NWA Games, and they specialize in... The word is actually, um, NFTs. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! I don't know who at the, the committee thought this was a good idea, but I guess they thought, hey, you know, the NFTs are profitable like a couple years ago, so why don't we keep grinding them away and see what happens? But yeah, that's one of the reasons why, and they've already released a couple games. The first couple games they have... Thank you, Sonic Riders, for your interrupted um, cameo. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, yeah. So in Beijing 2022, they had the Olympic Games Jam, which was another game on mobile. These games are all on mobile and on the Epic Game Store for PC. Which, good golly, it's on PC. I don't know who would want to download this for free on Epic Game Store. But you had there's the, the Beijing 2022 mobile game, and then there's this year's Olympics Go Paris 2024. And mind you, these games have had no marketing at all. Like I've been watching the Olympics on television like for the past couple days. I have not not seen a single advertisement for these mobile games so if you haven't heard about these games until now that's why there's been zero marketing for these games and it's either the olympic games don't want to focus on the video game part portion of like advertising or like marketing the olympic games anymore or they're shift they're shifting to other priorities which we are going to get into in a second so as i just said nfts it's one of the reasons why mario and sonic got canceled of all things why do it have to be nfts just of all things our goats had to be canceled by NFTs. What are the what are the odds? What are the chances nowadays? But the second reason is because the Olympics are entering a new era with starting the Olympics esports games. I'm not kidding. 
This is actually a thing that is actually happening in 2025 in Saudi Arabia. They made, there was a vote that was casted uh, a couple weeks ago in a meeting with the, the with the committee. Um, there's a post right here about it where they met up about it. And yeah, it's it's real. It's real. And as soon as I told my friend Ari, he's like, hey, you want to join me in this? Because I play x in a bunch of other games, so he's trying to get me on board with it. But that's besides the point. The point is, the two main reasons why Mario & Sonic got cancelled was because of NFTs and the new esports games. The esports games make sense. I mean, the esports scene isn't really that big right now, but I guess with the Olympics, with how big the Olympics already are, I guess the, uh, it, it kind of makes sense for them to jump into that. I mean, I guess so. But doesn't mean you can't stop making the game, but I guess the, uh, the Olympics didn't really see the Mario & Sonic series as a profitable uh, way to make money. But it would make a lot more money than what you're making now with NFTs. I'm just saying. By the way, I haven't even played the mobile games. I don't even want. I don't even want to touch them because of the NFTs. But I'm guessing they're not good. Don't play them. Probably do. I'm just don't play them. Anything with NFTs, you shouldn't touch. You shouldn't mess with because you're not going to gain any value out of that. The Mario and Sonic games are where your money's at. Even if the Mario and Sonic games weren't making much money though, at least they had brought something unique to the table. It was two, these two characters, these two beloved characters, one of my beloved goats, as you can see in my bed right here. Uh, they were like seeing the two collide in this way. Like even back, all the way back in 2008, just seeing them collide at first, everyone thought it was an April Fool's joke. Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's a good one. That's a good one, man. No, it was actually a real thing. And honestly, the fact that it went on for six games is incredible, mind you. Honestly, I thought after the Wii era, they might have ended. But with the Wii U, they kept going with these. But in the, the Wii U ones, in my opinion, are less quality than the Wii ones. Everyone keeps telling me that the Rio 2016 uh, version of Mario Sonic Olympic Games was the most high-quality one. But um, for someone who never played it, I had to watch gameplay of the, the Wii U ones because I only was able to play the Wii ones growing up. Growing up, though, growing up, though, I know I'm rambling a lot. This is what I'm, uh, this is the part of the video where we're going to ramble a lot. We have no more news. I just want to talk about right now how Mario, the Mario and Sonic Olympic series, it was kind of a mixed impact at the end. But at the beginning, at the start of it, it was kind of something unique that had massive potential. Not only is it like, I think Mario and Sonic was also the main reason why I was even interested in the Olympics in the first place. Because honestly, during around the time the Olympi the uh, Winter Olympics were happening back in Vancouver, I was a little youngling back then. I was like, what, like eight years old? I was a little youngling back then. I was like eight or nine years old. I was back when I got Super Mario Galaxy for the first time. And around when the Winter Olympics were happening, uh, my family decided to go to Family Video and rent Mario and Sonic at the Winter Olympic Games. Which, uh, 14 year old me decided to delete the save data for. Good job, young me. <laughs> but it was a great game, though. I mean, it was, it was a great game. It was a great experience. The dream events, having Radical Highway in there, having all these dream events delivered, de delivering fan service to all these fans, it was a great way to revisit the history of Mario and Sonic. And honestly, I wish they could do more of that. And I wonder what's going to happen with the two characters, like, colliding and collabing in the future from now on. Because without the, the Olympic Games partnership, What's gonna happen to this this awesome collab that gave us these great minigame collections? Especially the ones on the Wii and the DS era. Like the ones in the Wii and the DS area the area era are very underrated in my opinion. And I I believe the Mario and Sonic series delivered something that was more unique and very special at the time. And like it was a great it was a big deal at the time because it was the first time these characters have ever collided and collabed in in the history of their existence. But as the games on, games went on, the quality got really much very much lowered. But I feel like the peak is the peak of the series was when the London 2012 and the Vancouver 2020, 2010 Winter Olympic Games were happening because those those versions of the Mario and Sonic series were very much so the best. It had the most dream events, had the most variety, and it had it had the most the most fun in its features, both on the DS and on the Wii. Mind you, on the on the portable versions of the London 2012 and Vancouver 10 uh, Olympic Games. There were story modes. Sure, they weren't the most original thing in the world, but it was it was kind of a unique experience that you could take with you on the go. And honestly, yeah, again, the Mario and Sonic Olympic Games are the main reason that some of us, including myself, are even interested in the Olympic Games to this day. Like, I don't think I would even give a crap about the Olympic Games if it weren't for Mario and Sonic, which shows how important these games are, um, and how important like having import like having the most iconic video game characters to exist collide with the, the Olympic Games. That's why it's so important. I feel like that's something the Olympic Committee didn't really notice or didn't really like see to recognize um, when they made the decision to do esports at NFTs instead. It brought something new to the table. It was a different, unique experience because at the time, at the time that the original 2008 Olympic Games were happening with Mario and Sonic, Sonic was introduced to Super Smash Bros. Brawl, which also 
my brain was too dumb to process because my parents restricted me from using the internet. Yeah, I had I had a really bad childhood. But now that begs the question, what's gonna be in the future now for both Mario and Sonic? Because, you know, we the Mario and Sonic minigames collection, you know, it wasn't like it like we had that, but now what are they, what's gonna happen with them to, with these two characters coll collabing in the future? Because now I mean, Takashi Uzuka has said in the recent Shadow Generations interview that he wants to do more RPGs, so maybe we could get an RPG-style um, Mario and Sonic game with them collaborating, possibly. That could be a thing in the future. Or maybe the license will go back to Mario and Sonic in the future, maybe the Olympics Committee will see the error of their ways. I don't think that's ever gonna happen, though. They're like a really- they have, like, a lot of power. <laughs> so I don't think that's ever gonna happen. But, there is a small chance that maybe they could come back, maybe the license will go back to Sega again. And maybe they'll make another one in the future for the next next Nintendo console. Who knows? We'll see what we'll, we'll see what happens. But yeah, this series really did bring something new to the table, and it was something that was really unique. And I'm honestly, as much as I didn't play them as they continued to go on, the last one I played was Tokyo 2020. That was that was when I played when it came out um, in 20. It was, actually, it wasn't during 2019. It was during the pandemic that I actually played it because there was nothing to play at the time. As much as these games were shoved aside as the series continued to like be dull and didn't much, really bring much to offer. It did end off with a bang. Like, Tokyo 2020 had some good variety in it. Yes, there weren't many dream events. Yes, that is true. But the mini games, they like, as the new, as there were new games that were introduced at the actual Olympic Games, there was more brought to the table every year, just very little of it, though. And for the story mode, I think that a lot of people give the story mode a little bit less credit. I think for what it was, I think it was a bit unique. Um, for it to be the last Olympic Games that they had planned. But honestly, looking back on the Tokyo 2020 Olympic video games uh, line of games, for the amount of games that were here during the Tokyo 2020 game lineup, like, I feel like this was Sega's, like, uh, like way of going out with a bane. I feel like this was their final, like, their final outing. Like, I think they knew this going into it. Because look at this, look how many games there were. Four games, man. Four games is crazy. If you count the arcade one, it is. Because I have played the arcade version of Tokyo 2020 and Rio 2016. But yeah, look at all these versions you have. You have the a normal Tokyo 2021, which is basically just a Olympic Games simulator. Uh, <laughs> rest in pieces, Stadia. Rest in pieces. <laughs> and then you had the Switch version, of course, for Tokyo 2020, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Arcade Edition. And then you had Sonic at the Olympic Games on mobile. So it felt like Sega kind of knew this going into this this um that year of the summer olympic games so in one way or another i feel like they kind of wanted to end it there so i because at one on one hand yes the games were becoming less profitable and they weren't being bought as much but also you didn't really see much quality later on during especially in the wii u area people people definitely i said this before earlier in the video um that people said the 2016 was the best version honestly i feel like that had the least value to it it had the less the least amount to offer in my opinion I think the Winter Olympic Games definitely felt very mixed, especially since the Winter Olympic Games at that time for Sochi 2020, uh, 2014 were the development rights, the developer rights were given to Ubisoft, and Sega was involved, but they weren't heavily involved. It was more like Sega and Ubisoft working on those games. Sega still worked on um, the um, Rio 2016 games, but the early ones, the ones in the Wii, the Wii era, the Wii and DS era, there was one game on the Wii era that made that had a 3DS release, and that was the 2012 version. But those games in the Wii era, those ones had the most quality to them, in my opinion. Like, especially, like, the first one had its ups and downs. Like, the first one, don't worry, Beijing 2008, that one had some kinks to work out for the next game. But as soon as we got into London 2012, they nailed the formula. Like, that one had the best variety, the most mix. I actually played that one recently on the, on the stream recently, and I had a lot of fun playing the Dream Events. That was my first time ever doing the Dream Events, too. Like, I never really dived into Dream Events when I was a kid. But now I kind of wish I did. I only played Radical Highway when I was uh, when we rented that when I was a kid. Um, but I now that I wish I played more of the Dream Events because the Dream Events are really what sell these Olympic games and make them stand out as an Olympic video game. It's showing fan service to these old to the history of Sonic and, Mar and Mario, like showing Mario Galaxy levels, Sonic Adventure One, Sonic Adventure Two levels, Crazy Gadget, Windy Valley. All these old past past levels, good gang galaxy, super like all these all these levels, like all these le levels of fan service in these Olympic games, and you know I think that adds variety to these games. And I feel like that's something that I'm going to miss a lot because I want to see more of this happen, but I don't know how they would be able to do it. I mean, of course there there are definitely ways that Sega and Nintendo could pull it off, but that's only if they can pull off the partnership again. But they don't really need a part. They don't really need a partnership with a with a third party company. 
like the Olympics to try and make that possible. Because it's been done by fans. But that's fans. This is corporate. Although that shouldn't really make a difference. I mean, it's pretty easy to make a collab between two characters because um, um, Capcom versus Marvel. I mean, that's the thing. So just say Sega, Nintendo, just make it happen, please. And I know this video wasn't really too long, but I wanted to make a video talking about this because I feel like this is really important because I'm sure for a lot of you out there, these games were a really big part of your childhood. Like me looking up um, uh, gameplay and intros and openings for these games, I was looking in the comment sections for a lot of these uh, Mario and Sonic and Lipid Games videos of gameplay on YouTube. I see in the comments that a lot of these games were a big part of people's childhood. And honestly, for if it's if it's the same for you as well, let me know in the comments down below. Like, let me know if these games were a big part of your childhood, whether they left a huge impact on you or not. Because honestly, the, having not having these games come out anymore, it's going to feel different. It's going to feel a bit different. And this year... I think definitely felt, I mean, we already got enough going on this year as it is. I mean, Nintendo and Sega are already busy with Sonic X Shadow Generations, Mario and Luigi Brothership. We, we, got, we got a lot in our hand. They already, they, they already got a lot in their hands this year. We already got a lot coming out this year for us. So honestly, it probably wouldn't have mattered either way. But still, now noticing that there's no more, it's going to be weird. It's going to be weird. Maybe it'll happen again, but only time will tell. But yeah, it's going to feel very weird um, without a Mario and Sonic Olympic Games um, in the future. And I'm definitely wa I'm definitely going to want to return to this topic in the future, so make sure you guys stay tuned for notifications. But make sure let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. I'm going to leave it here just so I can uh, get to working on other things, because i got a lot of things I need to catch up on still. So I'm very behind. I'm very, very behind on things, and I apologize for that. But um, what do you guys think about this? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. Do you guys think this series should have lasted longer? Do you guys think that they could have added another one? Or you think the series may, might make a return in the future at the Olympics or in a different format? Let me, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, guys, leave a like if you happen to enjoy the video. And subscribe if you want to see more Sonic and Nintendo content in the future. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and leave now and make my uh, exit. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching the video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.